there's one thing that causes the most busts on the IFR checkride, it's executing the missed approach. This is probably doubly true when pilots are shooting approaches with autopilots, and it might be the worst with the best autopilots with two axis approach coupled units like those with a lot of G1000 equipped aircraft. Let's develop a quick SOP and strategy to do it the same way every time and avoid those busts. Here we're on the ILS to runway 31 at Dallas Executive. We're using the Garmin G1000 PC trainer simulating a Cessna 172. We've intercepted the glide slope and are working our way down to the decision altitude of 860 feet, which is bugged on the altitude tape. The autopilot is active and the flight director is tracking the localizer and glide slope. The missed approach involves a climb up to 2,500, so we have that bugged on the altitude selector. 500. The missed procedure also involves intercepting the 125 radial off the VOR identified Charlie Victor Echo, so we have that frequency set on NAV 2, and the bearing pointer pointing to it for situational awareness. We're on the green needles right now, sometimes called the raw data as it's fed from the ground-based localizer and glide slope transmitters but we'll be switching over to the pink needles on the mist to use GPS for guidance. Sometimes in training we learn about the five C's when going mist. Cram, climb, clean, cool, call. But let's add another C, click, to the beginning. We're first going to click off the autopilot when reaching DA. So here it comes. The bug decision altitude at 860 is on the tape and we're coming up on it. Once reaching, we decide to go mist. Minimums. First, click off the autopilot. Then cram the throttle, climb by setting a pitch up attitude. Note that this will often involve moving the stick forward, not back to counteract the full throttle. Clean the flaps, cool the engine slash carburetor as needed, then call your go around. We're gonna hand fly first here, climbing straight ahead to 1200 feet, after which we'll start a turn. Crossing runway threshold, the approach suspends. We'll push the SUSP soft key at the bottom of the display to sequence onto the mist. Tower switches us over to the approach, so we swap to the preset frequency. The GPS anticipates us reaching 1200 feet and counts us down to our right turn to 090 degrees as indicated on the MIST procedure. We start that standard rate turn to the right. We no longer need the raw data, so we hit the CDI soft key to switch over to the GPS guidance. We're also going to hit NAV on the autopilot controls, even though we haven't engaged the autopilot yet and it's a good idea to wait until you're at 1000 AGL before doing so in units like this, we can use the flight director while hand flying. We're also going to hit FLC to have our climb bug to our current airspeed. Now we can hand fly following the flight director, the pink triangle on the middle of the display. And at 1000 AGL, we'll engage the autopilot, and we're free now to talk to approach and coordinate the mist. We could have hit heading mode instead of nav mode since we're supposed to just fly heading 090, but going to nav immediately like this saves a step. Note that the HSI shows heading leg. The guidance isn't following any preset course because the MIST procedure has us just fly heading as 090 until intercepting the radial. So there's no pink needle to keep in the middle. We should bug our current heading just in case we need to switch over quickly. Okay, so let's review these steps on a different approach. This is the RNAV approach to 30 right at Rocky Mountain Metro. Unlike the ILS before, we're on the GPS pink needles here, and we'll stay there on the mist as well. This is an LPV approach, so it goes down to a decision altitude, which is bugged at 5,800. The mist involves a climb to 10,300, so that's bugged above the altitude tape. The autopilot is active, and we're tracking the GPS course in the glide path of the approach. When we reach the DA bug, we hit minimums. minimums and can go through our Cs. First C being click off the autopilot, then cram, climb, clean, cool, call. As before, we're hand flying on an initial straight out climb to 6300, but we can use the flight director by activating FLC when we're at our desired climb speed, and because we're still in GPS mode, when we unsuspend the approach, the flight director will now allow us to follow the missed guidance. At 6300, it has us fly 340 to go direct to Hygen, the holding fix, and we're just following the pink triangle, the flight director. As before, we activate the autopilot at 1000 AGL and switch over to approach to coordinate. So hopefully the takeaway is that you can still use your sophisticated GPS guidance for the mist, but do so in such a way that you remain in control of your plane in critical phases close to the ground and not confuse the autopilot once it's time to switch back over to that. 
Some aircraft, like many Cirruses, will have a toga switch, which makes this process a bit more automated, so it's important to be very familiar with how your aircraft works. But units like the G1000 and many Cessnas, or even another dual-axis autopilot like the G5 or GI275 platforms, can be used very similarly. The key is to practice until it becomes automatic. Good luck, and check out our IFR Ground School and more at the link here and in the description.